actually, Sydney was a large, hairy spider. And he used to live at the bottom of Green Acre Gardens. And every morning when Sydney would wake up, he would have a stretch of his legs. And the very first thing that he would always have to do is to mend his web. Because Sydney would try and catch in his web as many big, juicy flies. And when they used to fly into his web, he'd run across, he'd wrap them up with his special magic thread, and he would leave them there for his lunch. Now, I am very, very pleased that I'm not a spider, because I don't think I can eat flies from a lunch. But Sydney, that's what he did virtually every day. Sydney had a friend. I guess lots of you have got friends. It's always good to have good friends in there. But Sydney had what's called a best friend. And I guess many of you have got best friends as well. And it's always good to be good to our friends and especially to our best friends. Sydney's best friend, though, wasn't another spider. No, Sydney's best friend was Arthur the Caterpillar. And Arthur the Caterpillar, he used to live at the bottom of Green Acre Gardens as well. And uh, Arthur the Caterpillar, he never used to eat flies, no, no, no. He used to eat flowers, or lettuce leaves, or cabbages, or... And I guess to a certain degree, Arthur the, uh, Arthur the Caterpillar was a bit of a vegetarian, because that's what he used to eat, just vegetables and things like that. And every day, when Sydney had had his fill, and he'd eaten lots and lots of flies for his lunch, and Arthur had had his fill as well, Sydney would sometimes sit back on his, on his web, or lay back on his web, and he would think about this, or he'd think about that. Some of the times he didn't think about anything at all, he just used to lie back on his web and have a rest. But Arthur, his friend, well, Arthur, his friend, he used to, well, boys and girls, Arthur, his friend, used to sort of lie back on his, maybe on his cabbage leaf or whatever, and he would look at the, look at the birds flying around in the sky. And, and he would think to himself, that must be really, really cool to be able to fly. And, I am told, don't know whether it's true or not, but I am told that sometimes Arthur actually used to stretch up into the air to see if he could reach up into the sky to be able to fly himself. In fact, I'm actually told that one day all of his legs came off the cabbage leaf and he fell on the ground and buffed his head, but that's another story. Anyway, Arthur, he would lie back and he would watch the birds flying around and he would always think the same thing, sort of daydreaming really. He, and he would shout across to his friend Sydney, he would go, Sydney? And Sydney would say to his friend Arthur, he would go, Yeah, what is it, my friend Arthur? Uh, Sydney, I've been thinking. Oh, what have you been thinking about, said uh, Sydney to his friend Arthur. And he said, well, Sydney said, I've been thinking, it must be great to be able to fly. I mean, I wish I could fly. It must be amazing to be able to fly. But Sydney would always say the same thing back to his friend Arthur. He would say to him, uh, Arthur, my friend, you are a caterpillar. A caterpillar you were born. And a caterpillar you will remain. Don't think about all these things about flight, because you'll never, ever change. But boys and girls, without realising it, actually Sydney, he told his friend Arthur, a lie because you know as well as I know, that God's plan for Arthur the caterpillar wasn't to leave him as a caterpillar. It was to change him into a moth or into a butterfly. And so Sydney hadn't realised, but he told his friend a lie. You know what, boys and girls, I get people come up to me. I get children, I get mums and dads and adults as well come up they go, Mr. Hodge, or Pete, which is my first name, they go, I wish I was different. I mean, they don't always mean on the outside, boys and girls, they mean on the inside. They would say things like, I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't do things that were wrong. I wish I didn't think things that weren't very nice. I wish I didn't say things that make other people sad. I wish I could change on the inside and the real, I wish I could be different. You know what, some people turn around to that and they go, you are what you are and you'll never change. But without realizing it, they're telling a lie as well, because God's got a plan for us, and that's to change us if we put our trust in his son, the Lord Jesus, so that we can become part of his family forever and ever. So if anybody ever says to you, you'll never change, think because of, hmm, that's a lie, and probably you don't realize it, but God's got a plan for our life, and he wants to change us on the inside so that we can become what he planned us to become. Anyway, back to the story. One morning, Sydney wakes up. And he has a stretch of his eight legs, not all at the same time, because he would have fallen off his web as well. But he has a stretch of his eight legs, and he begins to mend his web so he can catch lots of flies. And he looks at the bottom of the garden and see if he can see Arthur, his friend, the caterpillar. Arthur, a friend, the caterpillar, not around. So he calls out, Arthur, my friend, are you there? No reply. Arthur! No reply. But, boys and girls, a slippery, slimy slug slithered up to Sydney the spider. And Sydney said to the slippery, slimy slug, Excuse me. But have you seen Arthur, my friend, the caterpillar? And the slippery, slimy slug said back to Sydney, he said, uh, no. But this morning, when I went past the cabbage leaf that he very often has to sleep on at night, he wasn't there. 
but it was a funny looking green thing. Never seen it before, but it certainly wasn't all for a caterpillar. And so Sydney said, thanks very much. And with that, the slippery, slimy slugs slithered on by. So Sydney decided to go for a look for himself. And he went to the bottom of the garden where the person spoke about, where they slowly talked about. And there, hanging off a little branch of a tree, was this funny looking green thing. And, 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 and Sydney looked at it and thought, well, I ain't my friend off a caterpillar. So he wandered off and wandered. And he kept coming back and he thought to himself, I wonder what, what you and I know that in actual practice is a, a cocoon or a chrysalis because what's happening is, is that our for the caterpillar is in the process of being changed into a beautiful butterfly, which is what God had planned for him. But old Sydney came up to this funny looking green thing and thought, well, that ain't my friend. And he didn't want to think it was him, but then he thought to himself, maybe my friend, our for the caterpillar, has died. And that's all that's left of it. But what he didn't realize is that for Arthur the caterpillar to be changed, Arthur the caterpillar had to die so that he could be changed into what God had planned him. You know what, boys and girls? For you and I to be changed, somebody had to die. No, 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 you don't have to die to change yourself. No, no, the person who had to die was Jesus. And that's the very reason he came to this earth. He didn't just come to show us how to live a better life, but he came to eventually die on a cross and be punished for the wrong things that we've done so that if we say that we're sorry to him, he'll change us on the inside so that we can be born again into his family forever and ever. Anyway, back to the old story. <coughs> Sydney, as the days went by, Sydney got used to his friend not being around, but he did miss him. But then, one morning, it happened. Landing on one of the cavities at the bottom of the garden was a great, big, beautiful butterfly. Sydney calls out and he says, Oi, get off that cabbage leaf. That ain't your cabbage leaf. That was my friend off of the caterpillar's cabbage leaf. All that happened, boys and girls, the butterfly flapped its wings, looking very, very beautiful. And so Sydney calls out again. If you don't get off that cabbage leaf, I will biff you with one of my eight legs. Now off it, get off it. But then, boys and girls, Sydney got totally confused because coming from the very spot where the butterfly was, was the sound of Arthur's voice. And it said, Sydney, Sydney, no, it really is me. I used to be a caterpillar, but I've been changed past my wildest dreams and I can now fly. It's as if I've been born all over again and I'm now a butterfly. Sydney got really confused by this. He went down, and as he went down and he began to talk to his friend, Sydney, uh, his friend Arthur the caterpillar, which was a caterpillar, he began to realise that in actual fact now he was a butterfly. And they chatted together. But as I look at the colours in the wings of Arthur, the brand new born again butterfly, I think there's something that we can actually learn from these different handkerchiefs. <coughs> Let's have a look what colours we got. We got a red handkerchief. We got a yellow handkerchief. We got a green handkerchief. And last but not least, we got a blue handkerchief. Hang on a sec. Let's just do a little bit of I've got a good idea. Listen, let's use a bit of imagination this way. So, I want you to imagine that this green handkerchief isn't really a green handkerchief. I want you to imagine, or pretend, right, that this green handkerchief, in actual fact, is a green light. I'm going to pop it there. I want you to use a bit more imagination now, because I want you to imagine that this yellow handkerchief isn't really a yellow handkerchief, but in actual fact, it's an orange handkerchief, which is yellow and red mixed together. So I want you to imagine that this, and actually a bit more than that, I want you to imagine that this is an orange handkerchief. I want you to imagine it's an orange light. I'll put that on there. A bit easier this time, because I want you to imagine that this red handkerchief isn't really a red handkerchief. I want you to imagine or pretend that it's a red light. Now, if I was to get that one up and pop that one there as well, we've got a red light, an orange, sometimes called an amber light, and we've got a green light. And if they're on a post, and usually by the side of a room, what would be the name of that special post with red, orange, or amber, and green on them? Or just a yes. Traffic light, brilliant, put your hands down, because traffic light, boys and girls, tell us a very, very important message. Now, the red one, what message does the red traffic light say? Right at the very front of you, yes, boys, yeah, yeah. nice and loud, yeah, boy, yeah. It means stop, that's right. The red one means stop. Boys and girls, got a great idea. Listen, why don't we this morning stop and think about why Jesus died on the cross for us? That would be a great thing for us to do in assembly. The orange one, uh, this is a harder one, so can anybody tell me what the orange... Uh, we've got a girl just here, yeah. Uh, 
It means get ready. Sometimes people, the boys, are going to pop your hands down. Sometimes people think it means go, but it doesn't mean go. It means get ready uh, because we're going to do something different. So this morning, boys and girls, stop and think about why Jesus died. Get ready. Get ready to say sorry for the things that we think, say, and do that are wrong. And the green one, let's have a look. We'll get a, we'll get a, yes. Green means go. Very, very good. Go if it's safe to go, then it's boys and girls. Not if it's safe not to, but if it's safe to go, then we can go. This morning, stop and think about why Jesus died. Get ready to say sorry for the things that we've done wrong. And go to Jesus and ask him to forgive us. And boys and girls, the blue one, in actual fact, isn't part of the traffic lights, but way beyond the blue, blue sky is God's special home called heaven. You know what? In heaven, nobody gets sad. Nobody does things wrong. Nobody dies. In actual fact, heaven's going to be like one great big party. Guess what? God wants every single one of us to go there one day. But only those people who have stopped and thought about why Jesus died for them, got ready to say sorry for the things that they've done wrong, and gone to Jesus and asked him to forgive them, are guaranteed of going to God's special home called heaven. We've got one. We've got two. We've got three. We've got four different coloured handkerchiefs. In behind here, I've got a little bag with handkerchiefs. A bag, maybe I could do a little bit of a magic trick. So let's have a sit here. So we get it. And we get the red one. The red one tells us that we must, or reminds us that we must stop and think about why Jesus died. The yellow one that we're pretending is orange, that we must get ready, get ready to say sorry for the things we've done wrong. The green one reminds us that we must go, go to Jesus, because he's the only person who can really make us ready to go to the God's special home called heaven. And if we put our trust in Jesus, we can guarantee to go in there one day. Now, boys and girls, what I'm going to try to do is to get these handkerchiefs now to disappear from here and go all the way across to Arthur, the brand new board game concert fly. There are one, two, three, four. I go one, two, three, four. I pull the gas and bag up, and we find that the handkerchiefs have disappeared from there. And if it's worked properly, boys and girls, they should all be back over here where Arthur, the brand new board game concert fly is. That's fantastic. We've got the red one. We've got the yellow one. We got the green one and we got the blue one. Now let's see if I can do a little bit more to these. We got one, two, three, four different colours, and we go one, two, three, four. Like that look. And all the <laughs> But you know what, even more amazing than that, is God's plan for us, and that's to change us and to become a part of his family if we put our trust in the Lord Jesus and ask him to become our special friend. Well, get your hands like that now. And what I want you to do is I want you to bring your hands together, but that when they touch, they're not allowed to make a sound. So put your fingers all in line like that, love. And then bring your fingers down on the toes. Bring your hands down to about there. That's quite a good place to put your hands when we pray. So let's put your hands <coughs> there, shall we? We'll close our eyes, and I'm going to finish off this assembly with a prayer. You listen to me as I say the prayer, and then at the end of it, you can say, Amen. After it. Okay, we'll sing the prayer. Dear God, thank you very much for all the things that do change around us. Thank you that, well, caterpillars do change into moths and butterflies, and tadpoles change into frogs, and all sorts of things change. But thank you, say you want to change us as well. So that if we put our trust in Jesus, we can be changed and to become a part of your family forever and ever. Be with us in school today, help us have a great day, and thank you that every one of us are very special people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.